and welcome to Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. Today, I'm going to be talking about a, a couple of subjects. I'm going to talk about some current events slash um, political stuff, whatever you want to say. Then I want to touch base on a AB dropout, a member of the former member of the Aryan Brotherhood by the name of John. I think Greshner is the last is the way you say his uh, name properly. And then I'm going to touch on. Uh, former leader of the Outlaws motorcycle gang, uh, the national president, his name was Taco Bowman. Uh, let's first start off with um, the Russian exchange, the prisoner swap that happened. Um, I think it's really cool that that, we, that the Americans were able to get, for sure, the guy from the Washington, um, uh, Jesus Christ, the Washington Journal, what, what, what was I gonna say? Uh, let me start back over. Let me start. Let me start back over. I'm sorry. Okay. Hello. Welcome to Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. Um, this will be done over several phone calls, and I want to talk about first the the prison swap that we did with Russia. Um, number, first of all, I do believe that uh, it was done uh, as kind of uh, a favor right now to the Biden administration. Meaning, it's it's done during the a political season, during this kind of a landscape right now. Uh, it was designed uh, to make Biden to look good. I do believe that Putin does not want Trump, and I think this helps the Democrats, which is all fine and dandy because we did get some people home. When it comes to Paul Whelan, I absolutely believe that guy was a CIA agent. I, I do believe that he, he had, there was something with that guy. I don't think that he was as innocent as he says. Paul Wheeler, Whelan, whatever his name is. Um, uh, you know, he's got citizenship in four countries. I don't know if anybody heard that. He kind of joked when they told him he was going home. He didn't know where. Uh, but I, all along, I've thought that there's a lot more to that guy. Nevertheless, does when anybody gets out of prison for anything that's done any kind of time, and I mean a few years or more, I think that's great. The journalist, um, you know, he's gonna he's gonna have a. a, a make millions off what happened to him and you can just see in this smile and I think that's great um, they had to go through a lot to do what they did diplomatically uh, but anyway I think it's cool that that got out I do want to say that uh, once again that Americans we feel in, that so many Americans feel entitled in different countries uh, that we don't have to follow the laws or we should be um, kind of exposed to the same kind of laws as here and people often forget uh that there's a such thing still as mandatory minimum sentences for drug, low-level drug offenders. Uh, like when Brittany Griner or whatever, she got busted. People were like outraged that she got nine years for a little bit of pot. But they're not really outraged about the time being given out here still. This call is from a federal prison. Same level uh, with all the people that I'm actually surrounded by. A guy of six grams has 20 years. Six grams of dope has 20 years. Another one has nine grams, which he got 11 years. It's just over and over again, all these low-level drug offenders. Um, or even ones with some weight. Well, a good friend of mine, uh, I'm in right next to his cell right now, 24 years. He thought he was going to plead guilty to 10 years, and he ends up getting 24. Um, but anyway, I wanted to say that. And uh, staying on politics for a minute in regards to Trump going to the convention with the black journalist a couple days ago. Once again, if, if anybody would really, look, let me, let me say where I'm coming from. I watch TMZ. We get a day late here. And I, they were appalled that the black journalist even allowed Trump uh, to even speak, which I thought was just crazy. So you don't want to hear a presidential candidate speak because you say he's racist. Uh, anyway, so he goes there. They played the first question that was asked by the first reporter. They played it in full. ABC News comes back and does shows the same answer that Trump gave, but they, they gypped the question, or what they did was they spliced it. It's, it's a, his, the statement, or the question, the answer, I'm sorry, the answer that Trump gave was nothing of what the real question was. It was not the same it was not the same response to the question that the ABC journalist originally gave him. And TMZ, if you go back and listen to the question, the first question, they play it in full. ABC News uh, only plays a little portion of it and it makes Trump uh, it makes his answer sound completely false from what 
what he was even um, responding to the to the original question. Um, what else did I want to go into? There was a, a few things I have written down. There was that um, the fact that uh, JD Vance is, is caught in this whole uh, uh, cat lady debacle, a bunch of a bunch of BS. I think that. The, Definitely the Trump administration is having regrets about not vetting him well, even though I think that the cat lady comment was a little bit funny. Um, As far as the Olympics go and the the boxing segment, I hope we can finally start shining a light on how ludicrous it is to have all these transgender people trying to fight like this boxing thing. A man who just because he thinks he's a woman wants to go fight in a woman's boxing league and they're accepting it that is fucking insane that's crazy um okay so now let me get into the issue with john greshner first of all i've never done time with john greshner and i'm here to say this um i get out of prison january the 27th i will be going to california for approximately a week that was the plan the plane reservations haven't been confirmed yet. If the BOP will send me there, then uh, that's what I was going to do because I have a, a one-way ticket black for a back that's already been paid for. But anyway, um, but things have changed recently, so we'll see if they do that, and I might even be out a little earlier, so we'll see. But my point is, when it comes to John Gresh, I heard he's been doing some YouTube shows, and everything I'm about to say right now, I would put him on, I would let him come on Convict Inc., uh, to talk to him, if not dispute what he's saying, because he says he was there during the Gotti, when he said, this is in regards to the issue of John Gotti. I am saying that John Gotti was extorted to Mary, and he's saying that he wasn't. I'm saying that John Gotti ran from a fight, did not fight. He's saying that John Gotti did. This is what I'm being told. This is what I know about John Gresham. I believe he was an ADX And I just tried to wake up one of my friends that was there. I talked to another one that was there during the Marion thing with Gotti, who's here. And I know somebody who was at ADX with Gresner. I believe he was in the crowd that dropped out when it came across the screen that the ABs were going to be locked down. And definitely, I believe he was one of them that 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 hightailed it out. uh, That didn't want to be that didn't want to be locked down uh, for the rest of his life, even though now he pretty much is. Or I think he's in one of the cheese factories. I'm not really sure. Um, I have corresponded in the past with Greshner's wife, Roxanne. Don't know if he's still married to her. Um, We corresponded for about six months. That's when I had Convict Inc., the website, so I am familiar with him. To me, he's another Michael Thompson. Uh, He's an intelligent guy. I think their stories have changed through the years. But this is what I can say in response to him calling in on a former YouTube show that John Gotti was not extorted. First of all... Gotti was not around the ABs first. He was around members of the Dirty White Boys. The ABs were not in the same facility or on the same unit, I should say. So Greshner wouldn't have been around Gotti prior to the guys that I used to belong to, which is the Dirty White Boys. Or, well, I say used to. I never dropped. I never retired, basically. Um, Greshner, the ABs were not around Gotti. First, there was two Dirty White Boys. Was there three? Two or three. At that time, John was being racist and calling the black guys uh, the equivalent of the, the, the Italian word, equivalent of the N-word, whatever you want to say, um, which started a, a racial incident, which people got transferred order, uh, over. Gotti did not. There were no ABs around. Therefore, Grishner could not have been in the same unit and was not. And I will prove it in the future. I will prove that he was not in the same unit therefore could not have seen John Gotti run or not or fight back like he's claiming. Was not there, and I will give you proof of that he wasn't in the same unit when it happened. When I get out of prison, there'll be a lot of proof. I'm going to, there's going to be, I'm doing a series, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let a lot on what I'm doing, but I'm I'm getting, I'm not going to be one of those that run my mouth and say things. I'm getting one of those that's going to start proving facts about what I say, especially when it comes to Gotti. I have a whole thing about John uh, that's going to be coming out when I get out of prison. That's going to be a lot of a lot of documents, a lot. So, Krishner wasn't on the same tier when Gotti put the soap in the socks that he ran in the corner, and didn't fight back, never fought, never busted a grape. 
I can't give the name of the person that I will. But one of the one of the conditions that staff that I'm being able to do this now is because I'm not naming names of inmates or staff members. By the way, this call is from a federal prison. Uh, I made a tape about R. Kelly, who's in a different prison within the same complex as I. Some moron in my comment section said that I couldn't prove certain things about him having $10 million or that he was singing. Um, it's called staff members. It's called, but in, in, which I will name, and, and he gave me permission to name them, but I gave, but with the powers that be here, I made a deal that I will not talk about staff. When I get out, I will do that, and it's easy to prove that that R. Kelly had ten million dollars on his books. And it's it's simple. Um, so I I welcome the the idiotic comments like that. Please continue. But getting back to Gresner, um, I believe I do believe that uh, he puts. I want. I'll know more about him when my friend wakes up. They they were together. Okay, and. I had to get this this out. I'm, I'm limited on, on calls. There's a reason. But I had to get this out, and that's why I'm doing this now. But uh, I, I will get more to say about what happened with him. I'm, I believe, like I said, he dropped when he was at the ADX. There was a bunch of them that did. Found out that unlike the Emmy, the, 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 Emmy, the Emmy, whatever, the Mexican Mafia, um, they were not going to – they were – notified that is they the brand the Aaron brother were notified that they were going to be locked down indefinitely and i believe gresham was one of them that that freaked out and said he want, didn't want to participate in i believe okay it's been a while um i had a lot on him as a matter of fact back when i was doing journalistic work uh back when i had the blog convict date but i i i will go back and i'll look at that at some time but when my friend gets up i'll have more on that but he wasn't around he was not around Gotti during the time I was talking about that the riot broke out over John calling black people the N-word or the Italian, the Italian equivalent of the N-word. Um, the N-word in Italian, that's what I'm trying to say. God, me and my words lately. But anyway, um, so Gresham, he, 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 he wasn't there. Maybe he was in the same unit. He, wasn't, he was not in the unit, and that will be easily proven, and I will do it. And I would like to have him on my show so we can discuss in detail what I'm talking about, what I know, and what he says he knows. Um, I look forward to that. I don't like to give rats a platform. Uh, you know, there's a few people on YouTube that didn't tell. Um, I believe Smiley is uh, one of them out of California at a murder app. I, I loved his show. Um, never got to talk to the guy. I had some friends that did. He's one of those that, that kept his mouth shut into my time. I, of course, was offered two years to tell, refused to tell, took a life sentence on the chin. So when I'm, when I'm on YouTube, unlike all the other people, or, or, or 90% of the people on YouTube uh, that, that had prison contact, I didn't tell on nobody. I didn't drop out of a gang. Uh, I, I never uh, 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 raced my patch, not erased it, uh, covered my patch, uh, whatever whatever you guys want to say, you know, and I walk proud and kept my head up high and everything I see on YouTube, I say and hear somebody's face. And since I've been in here, I, I've been saying like it is. And uh, that's just who I am. So uh, look for, but I will give, I'll give Gresham the platform and we can, we can, we can debate facts and I can show them documents when I have them in my possession when I get out. What's up, everybody? This is part three of uh, the audios I'm doing today. I'm compiling them all, having them all compiled together. So I want to say that uh, during count, I saw my friend who did time with John Grishner, and he said that in fa it, it for sure when he cooperated was when it came out that the Aryan Brotherhood was going to be locked down indefinitely. And he was one of several that just bowed out and said he couldn't take no more being locked in segregation, which he ultimately spent decades behind in, in segregation anyway i do believe i don't know where he's at now i think he's at one of the chiefs factories it's rat camps but anyway uh gresner was a, a pretty well-known solid ab before he tapped out um in regards to what he said and for those of you that don't know he was on a youtube channel and he mentioned things that kind of went against what i said about uh former gambino crime boss john Gotti. I am saying that I know people that were there that John Gotti was a racist who had uh, said basically the N-word in Italian too many times, which started a riot 
one of two, I actually found out there was two separate incidents which Krishna was not a part of. He wasn't even in the same block, if he was even in Marion at the time. The one I'm talking about happened when, when, the, when the dirty white boys were pressing Gotti, or John Gotti was just graciously giving three of my former brothers commissary just because he liked them so much. Those are members of the dirty white boy prison gang. So at that time, in, uh, in C block, an incident popped off where Gotti put some uh, soap in a sock and went and hit uh, the state back. He did not fight, he did not get involved in the altercation. Uh, like Krishner said, now, maybe he doesn't know that there was one first, okay? So I'm gonna put that out there, so let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And before I get off, this is what I wanna say once again, and I'll repeat this all the time, when it comes to Gotti. I, I don't know the man. I had some temporary dealings with his daughter. Uh, I don't like when people, when, when the media that like, create somebody and turns them into something that they weren't. Uh, Gotti was a blowback who Sammy the Bull made John Gotti period. This call is from a federal prison. It was he was nothing but a big blowback that, that just talked and got whatever, whatever. He, okay, some people would think he was a great guy. And I am really hated because I take on so many people and I turn, there's such myths about these people that they're, they're turned into larger than life anti-heroes. And here I come along and tell the truth about them. Oh, they were pressed in prison. They were punks in prison. They weren't shit. And here I'm gonna go again on that note. Um, I am friends, so I wanna say this to all you outlawed motorcycle members, uh, all you one percenters. I am friends. I was in time with Conan, who uh, allegedly national president of the pagans or whatever. I'm not, whatever. That's what I saw. Reports of his or not. Maybe he's not. I don't, whatever. Shout out to Conan. Great guy. Danny Byfield, Hell's Angel. Johnny Bart, Hell's Angel. Great guys. Uh, Outlaw Motorcycle, Mad, Mad Man. Um, RV, uh, Spike. Um, Jesus, there's, there's more. So I do not want this to be taking us any form of disrespect. I did something about one of the former national presidents. His name was Frank Wheeler, or James Frank Wheeler. They called him Frank because he was so frank. He was a close friend of mine. Uh, he revealed to me that he was disillusioned with the outlaw motorcycle club after he was incarcerated and before he died. He said that not only to me, but to one of my friends named Josh Yancey. From, uh, from Ohio or Kentucky. I forgot where Josh is from. Shout out to you, Josh. I know you listen. Um, we talked about this before. Now, I was not around Taco Bowman, who was, I believe, the first president of the Outlaws. I was not around him whatsoever. I, a lot of my friends were, including somebody that's here with me now. Actually, there's three guys I'm with now who were at FMC Butner back in 2018-19, I believe, when Bowman was here, and he died here. Um, this is what I can say about Taco Bowman. And again, this is not a disrespect to the Outlaw Motorcycle Club. Don't think I'm trying to district club. This is part of, I guess, one percent of history, whatever. And there's a lot of outlaws that know this. And there's a lot of Hells Angels that know this. And there's a lot of other biker groups that know this. So this is known within the system. I don't put out stuff that is not already known. Like I won't sit there and I don't go out of my way to, uh, talk about things that are that are secretive or try to you know get people in trouble for certain things but this is what everybody knows he was out i mean i said al taco, taco bowman was not liked in prison arrogant um some of his own brothers didn't like him uh, matter of fact i know two of his brothers sent messages to people that were at fmc and specifically said not to say hello they were different prisons, and they specifically sent messages not to say hello to Taco Bowman. They were dissing him. Why did they diss him? Well, Taco Bowman went and was sent to Coleman II. Now, for those of you who don't know what Coleman II is, it is a dropout yard. It is a child molester yard. It is a yard for rapist informants. Um, there are some good guys there, but generally, people that drop out of gangs, people that have problems, cannot adapt in other places, and that have high points, go to um, Coleman II, uh, USP Terre Haute, um, and uh, what's the one in Arizona? Uh, Tucson, Arizona. Those are the drop yards. Okay? Why was Taco Bowman there? Taco Bowman, some of his brothers were at, were at Coleman One. That's Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs. Tried to get staff to send him to Coleman One. He would not go. Why would he not go? 
The reason is, everybody, is because he was trying to cooperate. And um, when he got to FMC Butner, he was on the phone, and I have two friends that overheard him, and I'll get back. When I get out, I'll, I'll, I'll detail everything. But I made agreement with staff here that I wouldn't say inmates' names, but uh, one of them doesn't care. One of them said, wait till I get out, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honor what I said. Bomo was caught on the phone telling, and this is a quote, tell them, tell the fellas, that's the cops, that I will help them, but they got to give me a chance. Um, Bowman was in a cell with a guy by the name of Vic Webster. He told Vic Webster that he uh, intended to cooperate, that he was trying to cooperate. I don't know about what, I have no idea about what, okay? But he was indeed trying to cooperate, and, but when he got out, he would clear it up with his brothers. So whatever it was, maybe it was one of these John Gotti Jr. things where he didn't think he was telling, he thought he was out trying to out-slick the police. I don't know. I, I don't wish any, uh, no bad about the guy. Uh, it's not a secret that people didn't like him, that he was arrogant and that he uh, didn't, did not die a happy person or the friends surrounding him in bed and bringing him package. It was quite the opposite. He um, isolated, treated everybody with disrespect and, and was treated with disrespect. He lived in, uh, um, on a range cell uh, uh, 4126 by himself after Vic Webster kicked him out because he was trying to cooperate. That, my friends, you can take it to the grave, as they say. Um, again, I actually have uh, uh, somebody that I'm close to that's an outlaw, and I've been invited to one of the chapters clubhouses. Um, when I get out, and I intend to go, again, this was not meant to disrespect the outlaws. Uh, I do have a, a, um, a YouTube channel. I do and have had done reporting in the past. And I am in a position where I can confirm that what everybody has talked about in the past, and that's all, nothing more. It's just, it's just part of the deal. It's part of the, the, the media environment, social media environment we live in. Um, but again, I can say that he was trying, and as a matter of fact, I can go further, and I, um, I believe there's, I believe there's some paperwork, and we'll see if I can get my hands on it. And like I said, it, it, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll just see when, when the time comes. Otherwise, take care.